So let me just start by sharing a little bit about the journey organizations take around diversity, equity, inclusion, and then talk a little about, bit about the L&D component of that. Um, so again, this is a probably an oversimplification, and it's in, intended to just help provide some context um, and some organization really around how we approach diversity journeys, how we approach equity, how we approach inclusion. Um, and I want to, before I kind of talk in detail about that, one of the things I've noticed organizations do, and you might all have come across this as well, is confuse diversity, equity, and inclusion. And those are all really distinct concepts. They each have distinct goals and therefore require distinct strategies. With diversity, I've noticed folks really inviting differences in and then having kind of what I often boil down to is the diversity scorecard of recruiting and promoting and um, you know where are we at at each level. When we get to inclusion, folks start to realize, wow, this is something different. This isn't necessarily about the scorecard, but it's about how people are feeling day to day and how they're treating one another in a day to day um, behavior, a day to day capability. And so we start to recognize a difficulty around a top down approach. And I'm, you know, very much in the mindset that inclusion is about every person in an organization. And so we really start to focus on that person to person connection, that person to person, uh, in, in that individual capability. And we see this often happen through training and through ERGs. Now, um, about 10 years ago, uh, and probably earlier than that, when I saw what L&D was doing in this space, it started out with this raising awareness of cultural differences. Um, there was a lot of models around multiculturalism at this time. And I remember almost 10 years ago, I was in a training at, at my corporation, uh, an eight hour training on how to work with Indian people. Now I'm Indian and I was sitting there in this training and I was like, okay, well, I'm learning a little bit of new stuff. I hope everyone else is too. And it was really targeted at raising awareness of those cultural differences. Of course, since then, things have evolved, right? We've learned a lot about neuroscience and we're continuing to find ways to include that in our capability development. And so now we're seeing a lot of things around unconscious bias as an example, um, but we're really thinking about what are those processes that lead to discrimination and exclusion. And of course, there are things not mentioned in this list that we're doing, right? We're also looking at systemically, how can we provide support and safe spaces and create that psychological safety? Because it's not just all about training, right? There are systems behind this that might reinforce exclusion or inequities in an organization. But here's my question. Once an event is done, then what? And this is where, to me, the intersection between L&D and DEI really needs to start, head, keep moving. Wherever you are in this journey, where, what are we doing after that event is done, after that training is done, after that safe space dialogue is done? When we talk about learning and development, historically, we have focused on a program or a set of videos. It's a moment in time. When you look at some of our other capabilities, and we're struggling with this in DEI, when you look at things like organization development, when you look at change and you look at transformation, that's really where we're headed with equity and inclusion, is we need to build a capability, an organization-wide capability that's about embedded transformative change. So Part of that is a capability building component. And then the other part, again, is about evolving the systems and processes. So let's talk more about that building capability aspect um, and how that, how L&D can move from an event type or program type of mindset to more of that journey around transformative change. 